Okay, so for problem 10-4, we're given a circuit with a battery of EMF and it is connected in series to a rod of mass M and resistance R and length L. So part A asks, what is the magnitude and direction of the current in the rod? So first to determine the direction, we're going to follow um, conventional current, which says that it goes from positive to negative. So since the positive terminal, the battery is on the right and the negative is on the left, the current is going to be flowing clockwise, so the current in the rod is going to be to the left. And to find the magnitude of the current, we're going to use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. So now to solve for I, we're going to use I equals V over R, and in this case, the V is going to be EMF because the rod is connected in series with the battery and the voltage of the battery, in this case, is EMF. So I equals EMF over R. Okay, so for part B, it says, in which direction must there be a current in the cable to exert an upward force on the rod? So the rule when you have two parallel wires with currents running in them is that if the currents are running in opposite directions, they're going to repel each other. So if we have a current running to the right in the cable, they're running in opposite directions, so they're going to repel each other, so it's going to force this one to go that way. And also, if you look at it using the right-hand rule, if you have current going to the right, it's going to have the force going up, so it's going to push the rod up. So the current is going to be to the right in the cable. So for part C, it says, with the proper current in the cable, the rod can be lifted up such that there is no tension in the connecting wires. Determine the minimum current I sub C in the cable that satisfies this situation. So what we want to do is we want to find the magnetic force first, which is I, L, cross B, and we're going to set that equal to MG, and the reason for that is because in the circuit we have um, the force acting upwards, the force is acting upwards on the rod. And so it's going to be pushing it up, but it's also under the force of gravity. So there's going to be mg, and the two are going to balance each other out at the point where there is no tension. So that's why we set them equal to each other. So first we have to find b, so we're going to use Ampere's law. So we have b equals mu naught i over 2 pi r. And so now we have f equals ILB because they're perpendicular to each other so we can eliminate the cross product. So we have ILB that's still going to be equal to MG. So now we have I and we're going to use for the I we have the EMF over R that we solved in part A. So we have EMF over R and now we have L and then for B, we're going to use the formula that we just found using Ampere's law. So we have mu naught. And then in this case, we're trying to find, we're talking about the current in the cable. So it's going to be I sub C. And that is over 2 pi little r equal to mg. And now what we have to do is solve for the current in the cable. And so now we're left with 2 pi mg, little r for the distance between the rod and the cable, times big R for the resistance on the rod, over mu naught L times EMF. And that is our answer for part C. For part D, it says... Determine the magnitude of the magnetic flux through the circuit due to the minimum current I sub C determined in part C. So to determine the flux, we're going to use the formula for flux. So you have magnetic flux equals the integral of B dot dA. And from the previous part, we found that B equals mu naught I sub C over 2 pi. And in this case, instead of R, we're going to use the variable X. And the reason for that is because the flux varies along the distance 
in the circuit. Instead of just R, it's varying from here all the way to here. So we're going to call that distance X. So, and we're also going to let DA equal L DX because it's the area. And so we have the length of the rod L times DX. So now we're going to integrate it. So we have magnetic flux equals the integral from R to R plus D, which is because of the distance here R, and then to get the distance to here we have to add R and D. So we have the integral from R to R plus D of B dot DA, so we're going to use the formula that we found for B, mu naught, and for the I sub C we're going to use what we found in the previous part. So we're going to substitute that in right there. So we have mu naught times 2 pi mg r r. And then mu naught is over 2 pi x. And then still from the I sub c, we have mu naught l emf. And then times dA, which we said was l dx. So now we can cancel a couple of the variables to simplify. So we have the mu naughts, the two pi's, and the l's. So now we can pull the constants out in front. So we have mg rr over emf times the integral from r to r plus d. And then we're left with 1 over x dx. So now we have flux equals mg rr over emf, and when you integrate 1 over x, you're left with ln of x from r to r plus d. So now when you evaluate that, you have flux equals mg rr over emf times ln of r plus d over r. And that's it.